summary. Um, we'll turn now to to Wales and another old friend in in um, um, and uh, stalwart of the Freedom Association in, in David Jones, um, MP, who was an Assembly member uh, before becoming an MP, and um, was an excellent Brexit minister and very uh, very clear about no deal being an entirely feasible option on Brexit, and uh, you know I was a very important uh, advocate of that. Um, so, David, please uh, fill us in on the Welsh situation, which is a bit concerning with uh, all the borders being closed, etc. <laughs> we carry on. Well, Los Fuerza, David, uh, um, it's, it's very good to be here this evening. Um, I was brought up uh, in a small village uh, in North Wales, which was primarily Welsh speaking. Uh, and in those days, there was very little talk of Wales as being something separate from the rest of the United Kingdom. Uh, there was this understanding that we were different, certainly, but we were all part of a, a greater British entity. Uh, we all, for example, supported Liverpool Football Club, or if we had particularly bad taste, maybe Manchester United. <laughs> certainly, we in North Wales would not be supporting Swansea City or Cardiff City or any of the other teams from South Wales. Because uh, in those days, really, the orientation in Wales was east-west. Uh, it was a state of affairs that we were completely happy with. Uh, we uh, understood our neighbours and we all got on very well together. And I blame a lot of what has happened over the strains that are now afflicting the United Kingdom, as indeed I blame most things upon Tony Blair. It was uh, Tony Blair, of course, who uh, back uh, in 1997 promised a referendum on devolution for both the Scots and the Welsh. Uh, the reason he did it for the Scots was because he had huge problems uh, with his Scottish party and he wanted to placate them. Uh, but he didn't have the same pressures from it within Wales. Blair was very clever. Uh, he called a referendum, which he knew he would win uh, in Scotland, mm. and then had a similar referendum in Wales, but 10 days later, 10 days later, so the uh, Welsh electorate knew that the Scots had already voted for devolution. Mm. And the Welsh voted for devolution too. But there was a turnout of about 50%. Mm. And the majority across the whole of Wales was around 6,000, 6,000 votes. Now, I mention this not because I want to turn the clock back or because I want to deny devolution, but the, what I want to point out is that in those days, back in 1997, there was no great clamour for Wales to be governed any differently uh, from any other part of the United Kingdom. Now, it's quite clear that the uh, support for devolution has grown since then. Uh, it's grown for many reasons. Uh, part of the reason, of course, is that the the Welsh Assembly, or now the, uh, as it's known, the Welsh Parliament, and the Welsh Government have done a great deal in the intervening years to seek to hollow out the significance and importance of Westminster from Welsh uh, public life. This has been a, a straightforward process of seeking to accrue more powers, because like most institutions, the Welsh Government wants to accrue more power to itself. So, uh, HMG has been virtually airbrushed out of Wales. And that is, of course, partly explains why there was always such popularity among the, uh, the, the, the Welsh ruling classes for, uh, the, um, for, 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 for the European Union, because it was a way of bypassing Westminster. Funding came mm -hmm. from uh, Brussels, and it was then passed down to the Welsh government. And it was quite open to the Welsh government, therefore, to say, well, you know, this is the support, the financial support that we're getting from Europe. It's Wales and Europe working together. A new a road a project would have the Welsh dragon and the European flag emblazoned on it. No sign of the Union flag or any indication of where the money had originally come from, because, of course, it was British taxpayers' money that had been recirculated. Yeah. Um, of course, um, 
that was uh, that th this was all aided and abetted by um, by Westminster, or to be more to be more accurate, Whitehall, because for the best part uh, of a de uh, of two decades, uh, Whitehall was quite content to devolve and forget. It, it took a load of problems off the table of the, of officials in 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 Whitehall. They could say that this was a devolved competence and the Welsh government had to deal with it and it was one problem less. Uh, and this is something that shamefully government after government allowed to continue to happen. And the consequence is that we have now got a generation of young Welsh people who can't really remember the days when Wales, uh, Welsh people regarded themselves as both Welsh and British and were quite happy and content with that dual status. Mm. Um, this government is changing things. And one of the questions we have to consider today is how do we fight back? Yeah. Well, I actually do think that the fight back has begun. And the fight back has begun in the shape of Boris Johnson and his government and the UK Internal Market Act 2020, which was passed toward the end of last year. And this piece of legislation was met with howls of outrage from uh, both the, the Scottish and Welsh establishment, because what the UK internal market does for the first time in over 20 years is to allow the United Kingdom government to apply UK funds to spend on certain projects within the devolved parts of the country. Now, this is really important. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, there has been a huge issue in South Wales for many, many years over the state of the M4 road uh, near Newport. Any of you who have travelled along that road will know that you have to travel through um, two very narrow tunnels, the Bryn Glass Tunnel near Newport, in order to continue on your journey towards, uh, towards Pembrokeshire and, of course, ultimately the ferry to Ireland. Um, the Welsh Government have been talking about a new uh, bypass for the M4 road for very many years. They carried out a study, they spent 140 odd million pounds worth of taxpayers money and then they decided that they weren't going to bother with it at all. Now this is something that outraged the people of South Wales who desperately need that important piece of infrastructure. The UK Internal Market Act will enable the British government to spend that money on upgrading the infrastructure. And let me give you an, an indication of the extent to which the Welsh government have decided to hollow out the importance of, of, of Westminster in Cardiff. When it was suggested that the British government should actually provide the money for the upgrade of the road, the response of Mark Drakeford, the First Minister of Wales was, we don't want the money, it's our competence, we want to do it ourselves. Um, so I actually think that the UK Internal Market Act, it may well be the first flickering of a new dawn in Wales. There is a lot more, of course, that we need to do. Kate mentioned quite properly uh, the uh, sneering comments of the two news presenters on uh, the BBC the other day. Mm. But actually the BBC issue is far more important than their attitude to the flag. Mm. The BBC is our national broadcaster. Yeah. It is the British Broadcasting Corporation. And I actually think that the uh, BBC has got a patriotic duty to play its part in United the Kingdom rather than seeking to separate it. Mm. I think, however, that anybody who lives in any of the devolved parts of the United Kingdom will know uh, that their local or their regional uh, BBC stations frequently seem to be encouraging the separatist attitude that we're discussing today. It's certainly the case in Wales. Uh, yeah. If you look, for example, at their political unit, one uh, of their reporters has be uh, became a Plaid Cymru candidate and indeed is now a, a Plaid Cymru member of the Welsh Parliament. Another one became uh, the political, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the journalistic advisor to Plaid Cymru. And we've just had the appointment to a senior directoral role in BBC Wales of the past chief executive of Plaid Cymru. 
And I've no doubt that Brian is going to be telling us about similar things that go on in Scotland too. The BBC really does need to be looked at very seriously by the British government because the BBC could play a hugely important role in uniting this country and helping to rebuild the sense of British identity that the people of Wales had robbed from them by Tony Blair. So um, that, I think, is a good place for us to maybe start the discussion. What should we do about the BBC?